reading from the Book of Wisdom. When peaceful stillness compassed everything, and the night in its swift course was half spent, your all-powerful word from heaven's royal throne bounded a fierce warrior into the doomed land, bearing the sharp sword of your inexorable decree. And as he alighted, he filled every place with death. He still reached to heaven while he stood upon the earth. For all creation in its several kinds was being made over anew, serving its natural laws, that your children might be preserved unharmed. The cloud overshadowed their camp, and out of what had been before water, dry land was seen emerging. Out of the Red Sea, an unimpeded road, and a grassy plain out of the mighty flood. Over this crossed the whole nation, sheltered by your hand, after they beheld stupendous wonders. For they ranged about like horses, and bounded about like lambs, praising you, O Lord, their deliverer. Verbum Domini. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Then he struck every firstborn throughout their land, the first fruits of all their manhood. And he led them forth laden with silver and gold, with not a weakling among their tribes. For he remembered his holy word to his servant Abraham, and he led forth his people with joy, with shouts of joy, his chosen ones. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, While it is true I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones, who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, we will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. And when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith 
on earth. Verbum Domini. We've made a, a silent transition into the last few weeks of ordinary time when every year we place before ourselves that time when the Lord will come again to judge the living and the dead. And our Lord gives signs, but more than that, he gives direction that we should pray always and not lose heart. And all too often we do, we get caught up in what is secondary, um, the sufferings of the present age, <laughs> that even though we are enlightened, baptized, we still endure hard struggles with sufferings. This is what the book of Hebrews chapter 10 will bring to our minds, that we should suffer joyfully, that just as our Lord suffered, so too we will suffer. And but being enduring through that, we come also with him into his resurrection, into his glory. In the Catechism, paragraph 675, we have the sure and certain teaching that before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial, which will shake the faith of many believers. So when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So the direction we're given, the path we must follow, is the way of our Lord, the way he trod. That he too, in walking with the, the disciples on the way to Emmaus, after his resurrection, he says, was it not necessary that he suffer these things? And our Lord says, also, it is necessary for you that I go away. It is good for you that the Spirit might come. So the Lord will come to go in glory to judge. And now it seems like delay, that we await this great reckoning. But all those in this time who seek to preserve their own life, to live as their own God, to be their own judge, not living according to the ways of God, doing and believing as they please, as this dishonest judge, their hardness of heart will be held against them. The saved will be those who persevere in prayer, persevere in listening to the voice of the Lord who do not try to make everything happen for themselves, that only good thing, only accepting good and re rejecting all bad. No, everything comes from the hand of the Lord. Maybe he doesn't will it if it's suffering or disaster, but he br will bring some good out of it, that perseverance, that faithful reliance upon him like the widow. So their lives, the lives of the faithful ones, resemble the lives, the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So while many in the world ignore their end, or others give lip service, others seek to kill and destroy, others are given the gift of God. So God is so much greater, more wonderful, and awesome than anything that happens in this world. And that having trust in him and his awesome power, that he is truly almighty, we have nothing to fear. And that gift of fear of the Lord, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, inspires us to live out of that experience that God is God and I am not. 
we are not, that God is love, and we so often do not love as we should. He must be our life, so that when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on earth.